What's going on everybody? Welcome to uh, the second part of this accumulative swing index tutorial. In this video we're going to be uh, just calculating the entirety of this swing index and doing it step by step. So first to do this we're going to need uh, some sample data and obviously your input of the sample data wouldn't be as crude as this but we're just going to make it very simple um, and work through it. So we need two days worth of prices, right? You need open, high, low, close from two different days. So here, just as an example, one we'll, we'll call this, um, this is November 11th, 2013. And let me move the keyboard a little bit, there we go. And here we're gonna have open one equals something, high one equals something, low one equals something, and close one equals something. I'm just gonna add the space there. And so the open is uh, going to be 1286.50, we'll say here. The high, 1287.70. Oops, 70. The low, 1278.50. And the final close, 1281.70. And that would be for November 11th. Then we're going to do uh, November 12th, 2013. And again, we're going to do open 2 equals high 2 equals low 2 equals and close 2 equals. <clears throat> now, uh, the November 12th open is 1281.80. The high was 1284.50, the low 1260.70, and the actual close 1266.70. So now that we've got some sample prices here, again this is for gold, the gold's a limit move equals 75. And now we're ready to start working with this data based on that formula. So if I bring this image back up, we see that, well, we have a couple of things that we need to establish first, like these the R, K, and L. We already established L uh, because it's just a simple value. It's the limit move. But we still have to establish, before we can plug in this entire formula, we have to know what R and K is. So let's go ahead and uh, tackle R and uh, get started there. So we know with R, um, first we need to find out what is the largest, either H2 minus C1, L2 minus C1, or H2 minus L2, right? So that's the first thing we need to do, so let's get started doing that. So for this, we're gonna make a function. We're gonna call this define calc underscore, uh, calc underscore capital R. And this is gonna take a few parameters. We need to have H2, C1, L2, O1, and the limit move price. To calculate this, those are the required uh, things. So then we're just going to say uh, x equals something, y equals something, and z equals something. What are they going to equal? We're going to first do those calculations, right? So h2 minus c1, and then this is going to be l2 minus c1, and then finally h2 minus l2 plus x, y, z. And just for the sake of uh, seeing them, let's go ahead and print them out. So uh, later on we know whether or not our logic is actually correct. X, Y, and frenzy. So now we need to, we're going to call some if statements. So we're going to say uh, if uh, Z is less than X and X is greater than Y, so we can do that. Uh, we're just going to say print uh, X wins. Uh, then also we need to establish that, well in this case, R equals, what is R equal? Well, uh, let's revisit the picture again. So if, if H2 minus C1, right, for X, is the largest one, what is the formula? It's going to be H2 minus C1 minus 0.5 times this and so on. Uh, the only thing you need to keep in mind whenever you're reading formulas like this is you can't do uh, 0.5 and then open parentheses. And you can't do that within Python. Uh, you're going to have to say 0.5 times this. And to make it correct, you'll want to throw uh, parentheses around that. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So in this case, R is going to be equal to L2 minus C1 minus, and then again, it was 0.5, and then in parentheses, you were going to have L2 minus C1 
Well, the way you'll have to do this is going to be really minus 0.5 times that. But really what's meant to uh, come out of this would be this, right? So you've got to make it uh, algebraically correct. Next, uh, we're going to do plus. And again, we've got that same scenario, right, with 0.25 times whatever. And so we'll do the same thing. And then it's going to be C1 minus uh, O1 for open 1. And uh, just, just for the record, uh, make sure that you're actually typing O and uh, not a 0. Uh, so it's real easy, at least for me, whenever I say O, a lot of times I'll hit the zero key. And if you have fat fingers, you can also just straight up typo the uh, zero. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll go ahead now, and once we've done that, we'll print out R. And then also, we want this to actually return R. So we can call it, call this function, and this, the entire function is going to return the answer of R, right? Because that's our goal. We want to calculate R, and then so we'll return R. So later we can say, you know, R equals calc R, and it'll calc R, and it'll return, and it'll return that value. And let's say return R, and that's a five. It'll say R equals calc R, blah 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 blah. That makes a five. It'll just it'll say R equals five, and so that's the idea there. So now we need to do the same thing with um, the other parts of this equation. So L if um, x is less than y, yet y is greater than z. We'll print out uh, y wins. And in this case, r was equal to, um, I believe it's actually pretty similar. Let's look at it again. So if this is the case, the only thing, like the end of the equation is the same. The only thing that changes is really instead of high 2, it's actually low 2, right? Otherwise, oh, it actually changes right here as well. Bummer. So we'll have to we'll just copy and paste and make those uh, changes. So basically, everywhere you've got you know H. Um, I'm doing my best to make a copy and paste, but anyway, low and high will be the way it goes. So if this is the case, we'll just copy this. R equals basically the same thing. The only difference is this will be. I think and we might have actually done this calculation incorrect as well. Yeah, now that I look at it, yeah, this is actually supposed to be a, a uh, H, right? I knew I was like, I'll paste this out. I'm like, no, I don't think that's right. So I think this is the way we want it. So L2 minus C1, H2 minus C1. So let's pull up that picture again. Right, so this is H2, then L2. This should be L2, then H2. Yes. Okay, cool. It's easy to get yourself turned around, as you can see. Now, we'll go ahead and just print R, and then we want to return R, and apparently I never actually fully returned R up here either, so don't forget to do that up there. And then also, just in case anyone's curious, the purpose of running the L if here is so if this statement is met, it won't even bother trying to run this statement, so it keeps your uh, processing um, low, so it, it's the most efficient way to do it. Now again, we'll call another L if, and this time, uh, if x is less than z, yet z is greater than y, well, print z wins. And if z wins, r is equal to h2 minus l2 plus 0.25 times c1 minus o1. And let's consult the image, make sure that's correct. h2 minus l2 is H2 minus L2, C1 minus L2. Yes. Okay. So we've done that part right. So now at this point, we should have a fully functional calculation of R. So now when we want to run this, so keep in mind this is the actual function. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to go down here and we're going to call this function. And, and then we need to replace all the variables. So H2 is actually, you know, high 2. C1 is close 1. L2 is low to O1 is open 1 and limit move is 75. Just make sure H2C1 L2 O1, H2C1 L2 O1, 75. So calc R, so we could say literally R equals calc R and then print R. So in this case, we should get the returned value of R, and we need to go ahead and finish up this part. Print R. I don't know what where my mind is today. Return R. And 
cool. So now when we run this, we should get the uh, output of R. So we'll save it, run it, make sure we didn't get any errors. And we can see here that Z1, so this was X, this was Y, this was Z. And sure enough, 23.8 is the highest value. So Z did indeed win. And now we have the R value of 22.6. That is the value of R. So now that we've calculated R, the next variable that we have to calculate that has steps to it is K. Luckily, we did the hardest one first, which was R, since it had the most steps uh, to it. So um, probably the hardest part is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude the video here and continue on in the next video with the uh, next steps to these swing index. As always, thanks for watching.